Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Topaz Labs updated Photo AI to version 1.5.0. In this video, we're going to take a look at what's new and exciting in this, the latest version of Topaz Photo AI. At the top, I do want to mention that with this update, Topaz Labs is running a sale on Photo AI. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to that sale and information about it. Now, as far as this update is concerned, I also want to mention something about bugs. With every update, they squash bugs. It seems to me that with this update, they've squashed a lot of bugs, like more than usual. So if in the past you had a problem with Topaz Photo AI because of a bug and you've stopped using it, try it again because chances are they've fixed that bug with this update. Now, I'm going to load two different images in it. One's going to be a RAW file, one's going to be a JPEG because they have some new things for RAW files and new things for JPEGs, specifically new things for JPEGs. But we'll start with the RAW file. So I'm going to click on Browse Images and I'm going to open up this RAW file. It's an icon RAW file. It doesn't matter what manufacturer RAW file it is. When you open a RAW file or any file into Photo AI, of course, it automatically is on autopilot. It's going to examine the image. It's going to determine if it needs noise reduction, if it needs to be sharpened, if it is cropped, if it needs to be upscaled, and if there's faces there, faces need to be recovered. It does that all automatically, and it, that hasn't changed. What has changed is the status bar of what it's doing. You can see it's right here on the top right now. It's sharpening at the moment. It used to be down here in the lower left, so they moved that. And you can see that it is now done. Want to get a before after? Just click right on the image. There's before and there's after. Or you could go down to the bottom. There's a little eyeball here. Just click on it. There's before. Click on it again. There's after. I'm going to zoom out. So I'm going to go here to the magnifier. I'm just going to zoom out to 50% so you could get a better look at what the image actually is. It's of our cat Rocky. You can see it's a, an extreme close tight up. I think it was shot uh, with an ISO of 25,600. Uh, so it's a relatively high ISO and you can see there is a, quite a bit of noise. Now, every time you zoom in, zoom out, or you move the image around, it has to re-render. So as you can see, it was just doing that. So here again is a before and there's an after. And it determined through autopilot that this needed noise removed and we'll roll this open and we'll see what it did. Because it's a raw file, it chose the raw strong option as far as the AI model is concerned. The other option was raw normal. The strength, it's set to 32 and it didn't do any minor deep blur at all. You can see that that's on one, which is the lowest it will go. And because I accidentally moved that slider, again, it has to re-render. So none of that has really changed, but they have improved the noise reduction algorithms for this version of Photo AI. So um, it should do a better job at removing noise than it has in the past. So that's the remove noise part of all this. It also determined that it needed to be sharpened. So we'll open this up and you can see that of the four different AI models that are available, it used standard. It put the strength at 64 and minor denoise is at one that's effectively zero. It didn't move that at all. Now, one thing I wanna make you aware Particularly if you have images that are really tight, like I shot this image very tight, I'm real tight on his face, it won't always detect the sh subject properly. And to test that, just hover over where it says subject only, and you can see that there are sporadic red overlay over parts of his face. Well, that isn't the subject, it's part of the subject. I mean, his face is the subject. So you need to fix that. So always I would always make this a habit when you use Photo AI and it is doing sharpening, go down and make sure that it actually found the subject properly. And if it didn't, you're going to have to fix it. Now, here's how you'd fix it. You go to edit subject, click there. Then you have the option to use one of two different brushes. You either use a regular brush, which as the name implies, just as a regular old brush or the AI brush. Chances are, if it didn't find the subject properly to begin with, the AI brush will not work. If I choose the AI brush and I hover over the image, you can see how it's just putting a little red patch here and there. The way this is supposed to work is that when you put that brush over the subject, it should see the whole subject. So if you had, let's say, a bottle of perfume on a pedestal, it was a product shot, and you took this AI brush and hovered it over the bottle of perfume, theoretically, if it's working properly, it should find the entire bottle or at least most of the bottle, and then you could paint it in and it will find the entire bottle. 
Um, unfortunately, if it, through its autopilot, didn't find the subject properly, the AI brush isn't going to work. So don't waste time with it. Go right to the regular brush, go to add, and in this case, we're going to add his face, like probably from his, what would be his eyebrows, I guess, down to his chin. Now to do that, I'm going to get a very large brush, so I'm going to hit the right bracket key a few times, get a left bracket, use the left bracket key to make it smaller. Now, one thing you're going to find, depending on your graphics card, it may lag a lot. On my computer with my graphics card, which actually is a very powerful computer and a very powerful graphics card, it lags like tremendously and it drives me insane. It's going pretty good now. But sometimes, see, it's lagging a lot now. See how it took a long time to catch up? <laughs> so come in, we're going to paint his face. And then we could use the subtract brush to remove it from areas like down here where we don't want it. That's where the AI accidentally put it. Let's just say that's good enough. And you come in and you click plot. Then it's got to re-render again. So it's going to have to do that every single time. So you'll see the status bar, as I mentioned, is now at the top right. Over here, it's currently removing noise. It used to be down in the lower left. I like it better up here. I think that's a good move. So I'll let it do its thing and see what it does. And I tried this before I made the video. I just tried it out to learn where everything was, everything that was new. And I got to say, you'll see, it does a great job. This is an unedited RAW file. And once I remove that noise and do that sharpening, it looks it's going to look, and there it is. It looks awesome. I think it really looks great. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. You can see a lot of the noise was like white speckles and it gave it kind of a washed out look. So once it got rid of all the noise, it got rid of those white speckles, it kind of enhanced the color in a nice way, in a natural way. So it looks more colorful. It looks really, really sharp. So when you're done, now, of course, you could use Topaz Photo AI. I think most of you do as a Lightroom plugin or a Photoshop plugin, but you can, as I'm doing, use it as a standalone um, application. When you use it as a standalone application, you click Save Image here. And then um, I'm going to save it to the original folder and I'm going to save it as a DNG. I want to keep that raw format. So it's not touching the original raw file, it's non destructive, it's not going to hurt that at all. So we'll just save it to the original folder and we'll click save and you can see that it is processing the bar here. So it does take a while to actually do the processing in the saving of the file because it's just the way it is. I wish it would be a lot faster. So if you're doing a uh, bulk work, you have a lot of images in here and you're doing them all at once, this will take a while to process all of them and save all of them. So be aware of that. So schedule your time judiciously so you have the time to do it. Okay, it's done. We'll close the window. And now let's try out that JPEG, all right? I want to show you some things there. We'll go to the JPEG. We'll open that up. Now, again, it's on autopilot. It's going to examine the image. It's going to um, determine what it needs. And you can see in the status bar on the top right, it's removing strong noise right now. This is a JPEG. We shot uh, ISO 12,800, if I remember correctly. And it determined, you could see what's uh, active over here. It's going to remove noise and it's going to sharpen the image just like it did before. Now, I want to mention something about upscaling. I, those are both full resolution images, so I didn't need to upscale them at all. But if you are upscaling, there are some improvements there. Uh, in the past, when it did upscaling in autopilot, meaning you have a heavily cropped image and you send it into photo AI, through autopilot, it's going to determine, determine that it needs to be upscaled. It needs to be made larger. In the past, it would do like 2x or 3x, or it might be 2.5 or 3.5. Now they've uh, made it so that it uh, goes to more decimal places. So it will upscale it maybe to 2.567 or something like that. So um, I'm not going to demo that because typically I don't crop a lot. So I don't have to worry about that. But if you do, you'll find that uh, is improved. So it will do um, a better job. And one more thing about cropping. I don't crop ever myself inside of Photo AI. I crop in Lightroom or Photoshop and then send the image into Photo AI. But if you do crop here, in the past, if you had a subject mask on your cropped image, 
and then you decide to cancel the crop, it never would reset the subject mask, so the subject mask would be incorrect. Now, if you have a cropped image and you use the subject mask, so you're sharpening just the subject, and then you decide, I don't want this crop, so you cancel or, or just reset the crop, it now will reset the masking for the sharpening along with it, so you don't have to worry about going in and manually redoing that. Now, uh, it's done. Let's do a before after. There's before, there's after. You can see it did a pretty good job. Remove the noise. It's still a little soft in my opinion, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's go to the remove noise and roll this open. You can see because it's not a raw file, it has different AI models to choose from, normal, strong, and extreme. For this image, it's determined that it needed strong with the strength at 69, minor de-blur at 12, and recover original detail at zero. And you may say, what is recover original detail? Well, that is new. That is new for this um for this version, now you could come in with a non-RAW file, so this works on JPEGs, TIFFs, and other file types other than RAW. You could come in and recover some of that original detail by moving this up. Let's just max it out and see what happens. Again, you have to wait for it to re-render, which can take a while and be relatively annoying. So while you're doing that, you probably might want to get a sip of coffee like I'm going to do right now. All right. So it's still sharpening. And it's removing that strong noise again. Let's see what it does. See how this works. I maxed it out, which could cause issues, theoretically. And it's still going, still going. I probably should have paused the video, but now it's like I'm past that. All right, there it is. See how it returned, or it kind of brought back some of that noise? So you got to use this new slider, recover original detail judiciously, because it may bring back some of the noise. What I recommend you do instead, though, is keep that at zero. Of course, it's got to re-render all over again. It might go a little faster now, yeah, because it already did it once, is instead of going here and recovering original detail because you run the risk of bringing back that noise, go to the sharpening subject here and make sure again that it actually did find the subject, and the eagle's head is the subject, so it did a good job. So here, just go to strength. Now, it chose to use in the standard model. You could try the other models, but I'm going to stay with the standard model. But instead of using recover original detail, which is in the removing noise section, go down here in the strength slider and move that up. So I'm just going to max that right out. And we'll compare apples to apples, maybe. Since I maxed out the recover original detail slider up here, we'll max this one out up as well. Now, I'm going to speed this up. So we don't have to sit here and listen to me. Oh, no, I don't have to. There. Now there's before after. Now that might be, a, it's a tad over sharp, but you could see how it didn't bring back any of the noise. It just made the image much sharper, particularly where I want it to be sharp around the eagle's eye area. So there's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. So we probably, it's just very slightly over sharp. I mean, just a little bit. Maybe bring it down to 77 and see what it does there. But you could play around with it. Again, it, it's kind of a drag that you have to wait for it to always be re-rendering. But it is what it is. That looks pretty good. So there's before and there's after. I'd probably, bring, I'd probably try to be like push it a little bit and try to bring it up a little more. But that's just me. Because it is important for wildlife images to be sharp, particularly around the eye area. So there's uh, the after and there's the before and after. I think it looks pretty good. So we're going to save this image. Let's just save it again as a, a JPEG uh, with quality at 100 and we'll just click save. And again, now it's got to process everything and save it. But that's it. That's pretty much um, everything that is new uh, that's, I guess, worth showing in Photo AI. I mean, they have some other minor little things, um, but nothing that I think you'll even notice. So um, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to their full release notes so you could see everything, all the bugs they fixed and everything else as well. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.